Hello friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Somya and this is part 2 of the OOPS questions and answer series. Let's have a look at all the questions that I'll be discussing in this video first. And there's one more thing before we go on to the first question. Please subscribe to my channel and like and share this video if you find the content helpful. And moving on to the first question. What is a private constructor and what is the use of a private constructor? A private constructor has the private keyword in its declaration. It cannot be called from outside the class and thus we cannot create objects in this class explicitly. So whenever a constructor is declared, usually we put a public keyword because we want to create objects of this class and explicitly. But if we add the private keyword, not just to a constructor, but to methods and variables, it means that we cannot access these from outside the class, but only access them within the class. And the same applies to a private constructor. Now let's see what are the use cases of making a constructor as private. Firstly, when you want to control the instantiation of the class. This happens in the singleton pattern, where we want to limit the instances of a class to one instance. The second is when we have a class with static methods and static variables where we don't need the constructor at all. That means where we don't need the instance of the class at all. So we make the constructor as private. So that means we cannot create any instances of the class and access the static variables and static methods using the class name. Moving on to the second question. Can abstract class have a constructor? Well, an abstract class is one that cannot be instantiated, but still it can have a constructor because the abstract class constructor can be called through the subclass constructor. We, when we create an object of any subclass, all the constructors in the corresponding inheritance tree are invoked in the top bottom approach. The same applies to the abstract class. So the subclass constructor is get, gets invoked and then it calls the abstract class constructor. Now let's see the situations where we can explicitly create a constructor in the abstract class. The first case is where we want to perform some initialization to the fields of the abstract class before the instantiation of the subclass actually takes place. What this means is that before the values of the subclass members get assigned, we assign values to the variables of our abstract class. The second is where we have final members to which we have not assigned values during declaration. Then the only way to assign values to the final members is do in the constructor and thus we create a constructor in the abstract class. Now let's go on to the third question which is a coding question. Here we have an ABC class which has two display methods with the integer parameters as its input and then void and int as the return types. I am creating an ABC instance and then calling my display method. What is going to be the output of this question? Well this question will not yield any output but a compilation error. Because we think and it looks like we've done method overloading, but actually we haven't because both the display methods have the same number of parameters and the same data type. In method overloading, the signature of the methods need to be different and the difference is in the number of parameters or in the data type of the parameters. While in this case, both the display method have the same details, but the return type is different and it does not matter in method overloading. So here we are not achieving method overloading and this gives a compilation error. Moving on to the next question. Can constructors be static, final or abstract? Well, a constructor can certainly not be static. And the reason is that static keyword when added to a variable or a method makes it belong to the class and not to the instance of the class. But when we have constructors, what we are actually doing is we are initializing the instance variables. So every time an instance of a class is created, a constructor is called. So this becomes a negative point so we cannot have cons constructors as static the second is a constructor cannot be final and if we try to add the final keyword the compiler will give an error this happens because the final keyword actually prevents the method to be overridden but when a class is inherited by a subclass everything gets inherited apart from a constructor so if a constructor is not inherited it cannot be overridden as well so adding a final keyword to a constructor is superfluous now, an abstract constructor would have no meaning because when we say we are creating an abstract constructor, it means that we are not giving the implementation of the constructor inside the superclass and we are imagining that the constructor will be given an implementation in the subclass while 
constructors belong to the class in this in the way that they have the same name as the class name so then we cannot have an abstract constructor in our superclass and then provide the implementation in the subclass but having the name of the abstract class that will be too much of chaos so we do not have an abstract constructor moving on to the next question which is again a coding question abstract i have created an abstract class which is the parent class and a child class that extends my parent class i have two constructors each in the parent and the child class and i have uh, two param uh, two variables one in the parent and one in the child class i have created the instance of a child class now if you notice i have a display method that's abstract and we know that this will create a compilation error because my child class though extending my parent class is not providing the implementation to the abstract method so the output of this program is going to be a compilation error there are two ways that we can resolve this error one is by either providing the implementation for the display method and second is by making the child class also as an abstract class moving on to the next question can abstract class have a static method well an abstract cats class can definitely have a static method we can call this static method by either using the abstract class directly or by using the child class that extends this abstract class so we will not have any issues creating a static method in the abstract class because it will still belong to the class and can be accessed using the abstract class name next question will be is it necessary to have abstract method inside an abstract class an abstract class is one that cannot be instantiated but it does not uh, forcefully imply that you have to have abstract methods in an abstract class it's just an additional benefit that abstract methods can be added to an abstract class well if you have at least one abstract method in a class you have to make that class as an abstract class a very good example of this is the http server class which has all the methods for default implementations but still is an abstract class moving on to my next question oh it's a coding question again we have a parent example class and a child class which extends my parent example class i have two static variables in my parent example and then i have a derived variable again a static variable in my child class i have constructors in each of these classes and then i'm creating instances of my child class and my parent class what's going to be the output well don't worry it's not going to be a compilation error this time because the code is perfectly sound now what will happen is that when i create the child class instance for the first time it calls my child class constructor thus invoking my parent class constructor so the variable one value becomes from 0 to 1 variable two also becomes 0 to 1 and derived variable also becomes 0 to 1 now the important point here comes that when you create the second instance since we have static variables which belong to the class and not to the instance the variables will get appended from 1 to 2 so variable 1 will get incremented from 1 to 2 variable 2 will also get incremented and so will the variable the derived variable this is an important point to understand since the static variables belong to the class they are not affected by the instance so we are not resetting the value of these variables to 0 instead they are getting incremented every time and when i am creating the third time the parent example class uh, object at that time only the parent example constructor gets called and the variable value variable one's value becomes 3 so let's look at the output the output as we have understood is variable 1 will be 3 the derived variable will be 2 while the variable 2 will have the value 2 moving on to my next question which is an enums question can enum extend a class or implement an interface well enums cannot extend any classes in java because it implicitly extend the abstract base class java.lang.enum so we know that multiple inheritance is not supported in java we cannot uh, enum cannot implement multiple classes and since it's already implementing a base abstract class it will not be able to implement and extend any other class the second part of this question is can enums implement an interface and yes enums can implement an interface in fact by default it implements one interface which i'm not going to tell you but you can put them in the comment box and i will verify if that's the correct answer moving on to the next question can enums be declared final or have abstract methods well enums are already final and st static they are inherently final in fact and java doesn't allow any class to extend an enum type 
enums can have start abstract methods, but there's a very important condition that all the enum values will have to implement the abstract method. Moving on to the next question, which is a coding question. Example, base is a base class, which is getting extended by der derived class. And then I have in both the classes, my instance variables and constructors. And my child class also has a display method, which is printing the base class variable value and the derived class variable value. Now let's understand what's going to be the output of this question. Well, there is a error in this question. So it's going to be a compilation error because I am calling, if you can see, I'm creating the object of my derived class here and I'm passing the 10 in the parameterized constructor. And this gets assigned to the derivative. But we know that when a child class constructor is called, it will first invoke the parent class constructor. So it's trying to invoke my parameterized base class constructor, but that does not happen because I don't have a super keyword here written that should pass the value of this V variable. And we know that once we add a parameterized constructor, or any kind of a constructor in the class, the compiler will not add any constructors by default. So there's no default constructor that is added to add to the base class. So we will have to get a compilation error in this question. Next question is, can interface be declared as final or have static methods? Well, a final class cannot be extended. On the other hand, an interface is one which has all the abstract methods and it has to be implemented to provide implementations to these methods. So an interface can never be final. In interfaces can though have static methods and this has been an inclusion since JDK 8 where JDK 8 allows us to add default and static methods to interfaces. But there's one condition here that we have to have these static methods with implementations and they can't be overridden by the subclasses because we don't want subclasses to change the behavior of our static methods. Moving on to the next question, we have a parent class and which has an instance variable and a constructor and also an abstract private display method. There's a child class that is extending this parent class and it has its own display method, uh, instance variable and also a constructor. Now let's see what's going to be the output of this question. Well, yes, you guessed it right if you did. It's a compilation error. In fact, there are two. One is the illegal combination of the abstract and private keyword. So I have made the display method as private and abstract. Let's understand how these words are going to impact our display method. When you add the abstract method, it means that you want the subclass to provide an implementation. But when you add the private keyword, you are specifying that I don't want anybody to access this method from outside my parent class. In fact, even the child classes cannot access the display method. So then it will be difficult to have a method that's abstract and private at the same time because we want to provide the implementation and we can't provide the implementation. The next issue is that though the display method is trying to override this abstract method, it does not have the override keyword. So it's not able to override the abstract method. Now moving on to the next question, which is, can the main method be overloaded? Well, yes, you can overload the main method and provide different signatures for the main method. But Java will call the main method with the signature that is public static void main and string arguments. Even if you have multiple implementations, they will not be called. Now, the next question is, we have a class static example, which has an instance variable that is get, uh, and we have a constructor, which is assigning the value to the instance variable. I also have a display value method, which is a static method. And then I have a main method where I'm instantiating my static example and then calling my display value method. Well, this has compilation error issues. First of which is that we cannot access an instance variable from a static method. I've already told you in my previous static video that we cannot access instance variables from static methods. The static methods belong to the class while instance variables belong to the instances of the class. And the second issue is that we don't need to call the display value method by the instance of the class. We should actually be using the class name to access the display value method. Moving on to the next question. Can we create objects of a final class? Well, yes, definitely you can create objects of a final class. 
adding a final keyboard only inhibits the class from getting extended. It does not make the, mean that you cannot create objects of this class. A very simple example of this is a string class, which is a final class, because we don't want users to provide their own implementation of the final of the string class, but still we are creating objects of the string class all the time. Now, the last question of this video. Can we have variables in the interface? This one is a little tricky because in interfaces, usually we have abstract methods which are uh, abstract and have to be uh, implemented by the subclasses. Well, if we have variables in the interface, how would they look like? We will have to have variables that are declared as constants and not instance variables. They have to be static and final by default and also public. Now, the constants defined inside an interface are mostly those that will be used inside the subclasses implementing this interface. Since an interface cannot be instantiated, the variable can be referenced using the interface name and that is why it is static. We don't want different subclasses implementing the interface to provide their own value which might affect the interface behavior. So, we keep them as final as well. Now, this was the last question of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and these questions were helpful to you. If you find them helpful, please don't forget to like my video. If you have any other questions, please don't forget to put them in the comment box and I will try to answer them. Thanks for watching.